Hi, I'm Michael. Critical reasoning is one of the three types of questions we will see in the verbal section. In this type of question, we will read a single paragraph passage in which some argument will be presented and will be asked a question about it. These questions deal with one concept, how facts turn into conclusions. In other words, when we learn something new about the world, what is the basis for what we've learned? Is it only facts or are there assumptions as well? What could make us doubt this conclusion? What could strengthen it? The arguments we read always imply a certain causation. Based on this evidence, X causes Y. And the questions require us to assess this claim. As is the case in the entire verbal section, our main challenge in these questions is time. Thus, the biggest mistake we can make is read all of the answers. Besides being incredibly time consuming, this can also be misleading. It's like meeting five people who tell you a story and you know four of them are lying, but they're all trained actors. These guys are so persuasive. We don't want to listen to them. We're much better off figuring out exactly what we are looking for before letting them speak. That way, we won't be fooled. Let's look at an example. You may want to pause the video and answer it. Many new hotels and resorts were constructed in Central Africa during the last decade as a result of the constant increase in the number of tourists traveling there. Nevertheless, although there was no reduction in the prevalence of the mosquitoes causing swamp fever, the number of tourists to Central Africa who suffered from the disease decreased. Which of the following, if true, most helps explain this decrease? In this question, the passage gives us enough information so we can answer the question precisely. If changes in the number of mosquitoes were not the cause of the decrease in the number of tourists suffering from swamp fever, it must be the tourists themselves who are better protected against the disease, which is exactly what C tells us. Let's look at another question. Pause the video and give it a go. Many new office buildings have emerged in St. Martin, virtually doubling the available office space. The city is expected to maintain its population and does not currently have any shortage of office space. Nevertheless, investors have almost tripled the amount they are willing to pay for any available office space or any future office building projects in the city. Which of the following, if true, most justifies the investor's willingness to pay more for office space in St. Martin. This question calls for us to approach it using the logic of pricing. If the investors are willing to pay more for the product, they must be expecting to make a higher profit off each unit of the product. But how? Well, using the same logic, we'll see there are really only two options here, lower cost, or higher revenue. And since the passage tells us their costs are actually higher, three times as much, we know we are looking for an answer choice which gives us a reason as to why they can expect higher revenue. And that's exactly what C provides. Can afford higher rental rates means higher revenue. Sometimes though, the question doesn't give us enough to go on. And we'll simply have to as a matter of last resort, look at the answers. Growing wheat in 500 to 200 BC in the region of Damchan required the use of large quantities of water for irrigation, which had to be brought from remote locations. And yet, the Damchan people kept growing wheat, although they had the option to grow other, less water-demanding crops such as vegetables. Which of the following, if true, most helps to explain the Damchan's preference to grow wheat during the period of 500 to 200 BC? Here, we're being asked to identify a solution for a mysterious phenomena. This question requires the alternative approach of using the answers. It's not immediately obvious what the answer should be. And it seems to make sense to compare the answers, but let's do so critically, of course. 
A is irrelevant because it involves something which happened before the period we're discussing. Notice, we're talking about 500 to 200 BC. That's 500 to 200 before Christ. So before 500 BC is out of our range. It's not interesting. Similarly, B is irrelevant because it describes something these days and not in the relevant era. C looks promising. It tells us the reason the farmers planted these crops. But wait, we're asked why the Damchan people in general made this choice. And the ruler is part of the people. Why did the ruler order this? We don't know. It's not our answer. D doesn't help us. It describes other crops and the fact that they weren't grown only makes the case of the wheat more mysterious. E is what we're looking for. A legitimate reason for wheat to be grown. So, to recap, we'll try to answer before reading the answers. This is the first commandment of critical reasoning questions. It's really the only way to solve all the questions in the time we are given, and it's a crucial way to avoid confusion and zero in on what we're actually looking for.